I was working hard then and I'm working hard now, but I'm doing different things and it's the different things that I'm doing, you know, rather than trying to do all the things that don't necessarily work, it's narrowing down on those things that do work. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Unstoppable Woman podcast. And today we have a spotlight, an Unstoppable Woman spotlight, which I'm super excited to bring to you. This is Alexa Rivers. This is her pen name because she is a fabulous author, self-published author that happens to be a client of mine and has very generously decided that she would love to share her story of really breaking through in the self-publishing author world. And I cannot wait for her to share this story. We'd like to do these spotlights to help people understand what's actually possible. Um, people, people start at all different levels in their business when they're working with me. And uh, Alexa actually started writing, obviously, before she started working with me, but it's really taken off in the last little while. And I cannot wait for her to her, share her story as one of the the amazing and stoppable women in our community and to to help you really understand what's possible if you go for it so welcome to the show alexa lovely to have you here hi thanks for having me and she has a fabulous new zealand accent as well one of the yeah, things i'm trying not to talk too quick <laughs> <laughs> thank you one of the things that i just want to give a shout out to you about and I have a question about this as well. Is so Alexa is in New Zealand. We're on Eastern time. We we try and make the coaching calls that we have as part of the Spirit of Wealth program something that is accessible to people in New Zealand, but it's still oftentimes getting up in the middle of the night if she's coming to a summit or if she's coming to a retreat that we're doing and we can't put the coaching calls at the end of the day. She is often getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning to to make these. And I've often talked about moving mountains in order to do things. And I I want to start with that because it's one of the things that I've I've witnessed in you as a, a really powerful trait that when you commit to something, you're all in, you move mountains to make it happen. Has that always been a character trait of yours? I think it probably has been for the things that I really care about. Um, and I remember being a little bit freaked out by the idea of those uh, early mornings, you know, three or four o'clock when you and I first talked um, and you made a comment about, you know, what would you, would you do those early mornings if it could get you to be where you want to be? And there's not much that wouldn't, that would get in the way of me getting where I want to be. So it kind of, didn't feel like that big of a deal after that um and yeah I think I'm just a bit stubborn I think <laughs> I actually remember my dad having a speech at the wedding and a lot of it just I don't know how it ended up being about my stubbornness and how I'd always um put myself out there you know even though I'm quite shy um and just go for something if I really wanted it yeah it's a it's a it's that determination is a really powerful trait so, so let's go back to where you were when we had that conversation, both in your writing journal journey and in your financial journey. So can you describe the before, if you will? Yep. Um, so when we started working together, I had a six, seven, eight books out, something like that. And I was making about $1,000 a month, um, reasonably consistently, but I was having a really hard time breaking through that even just getting up you know another hundred dollars um, wasn't something that was really happening um, so I was yeah I was having a really hard time breaking through that threshold and how long had you been at that thousand dollars a month I know you your books happened over time but how long have you been been hanging out at that thousand dollars a month um, probably a few months I think we started working together it was September October of last year and I think I'd probably been there since about May um, and for context, I started publishing in June of the year before. So I think I've been publishing for a little over a year when we started working together. Okay, fantastic. And you had a day job and you still have a day job, correct? Yes, that's right. 
Okay. And what was your goal? Um, my big goal for now is to quit that day job, <laughs> which I'm aiming for for the end of this year. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So now let's talk about what happened along the, well, let's do the, let's do, cause I can't contain myself cause I'm super freaking proud of you. Okay. Let's talk about the after that just happened this past month. And then let's talk about the journey because the, the after looks like, oh, you snap your fingers, but there's, there's been some, some, you know, challenges along the way that you've had to break through on. And I think that's the important part of really listening to people's journeys is understanding that the challenges are not unique and how do we break through? So, but before we get to that, what happened for you last month? So let's say you started last, you ended last year around a thousand a month, correct? Yeah. Okay. And, and we are in September. So in August of the next year, so eight months later. I had a $9,000 month last month, which was pretty exciting. Woohoo! I'm so excited for you. So you nine times your income in a matter. What, yeah. what, when did you start? I, you just told me, but I can't remember. Was it like um, roughly December of last year? Is that right? But what, what's the time frame that we're talking about? I think it was about a year ago that we okay. started working. Okay. And then you joined the Spirit of Wealth in January, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So she did a, a, she did a, a boot camp that I had uh, last year, but we no longer have that program. So you, you did that eight week program and then you did the spirit of wealth. Okay. And you nine times your income in basically a year. Who does that? That's <laughs> so amazing, right? That's freaking fantastic. All also all while holding a day job. So I want you guys to know if you're someone who has a day job that, and you're saying, oh, I don't have time that that's, a, a, a story that you're telling yourself in order to not face the challenges and that you can do both, but you have to really want it. So, so Alexa, talk to me about the challenges and how you dealt with the, the day job, the time management aspect of it and, and how you approach that. Cause that's a big one for people. I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting myself, but it's a big one for people that time management is, is a huge thing. People have kids, people have day jobs, they have other responsibilities and they're going for their dreams and, and they feel like they're pulled in a lot of different directions. So you're someone who's been able to really focus. What have been some of your strategies around that? I think having a solid plan and being really organized has helped. Um, I'm just a kind of a spreadsheet organizational type person to start with. Um, but I kind of have my day split out. So the morning before work, generally I do my writing and then after work, it's the editing and the admin. So I'll kind of pray and I have a, a spreadsheet, which is what I need to get done every day to, you know, it, it extends out six months. Uh, so that's just kind of like in order to meet those things over the next six months, these are the things I need to get done this day. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of knock them out in order of most important to least important. So if something does get missed off the end, it's it's not a big deal. And have you always been a spreadsheet person or is that a new uh, process for yourself? Um, I've always been organized, but probably more lists than spreadsheets. My husband is a big spreadsheet guru. So he set up a, a dozen or so for me for various things. Um, so that's probably over the last. Oh, I've had that particular spreadsheet going for actually about two and a half years now, but most of my ones that I use are a bit newer. Okay. And so what do you think has really helped you? So, so you've always been organized, which is great. And you've all, you, you have your day very clearly laid out. This is writing time. This is work time. This is, um, editing and admin time. And do you have any challenges around the balance in your life? Because one of the things we, we, we do in the, the work that we do is like, what do you, what do you want for all of your life? Like I work with a lot of driven, ambitious women like yourself, and you're all in on what you want, but you also want to have many other things in your life. Has that been easy for you to attend to those? Or is that a challenge for you? That's kind of a constant challenge for me, I think. Um, and it's 
something I'm getting better at in a lot of ways, but there's still lots of room to grow as well. Um, so yeah, probably for me, balancing exercise and, and family are the two bigger things. Mm -hmm. um, my husband is also very, like his job is very important to him. So him and I kind of, that works out quite well for us. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's been about working out the, where I can fit in the family time and uh, time for other bits and pieces. And my scheduling so far ahead helps with that a certain, to a certain extent, but there's always bits and pieces that come up unexpectedly. Um, and I think a lot of the, the thing there has just been making it clear to the people in my life when I'm going through a really busy time um, and when I have a bit more time and also, you know, what I can be available for and what I can't. So there's been, you know, like there might be things that I don't really need to be involved in. Um, and kind of brushing those aside and focusing on the more important things. Have the people in your life been amenable to that or has that been a challenging conversation to have? For the most part, it's been pretty good, but we have had a, I have had a couple of boundary setting kind of conversations that have ended up um, well enough, but you know, it wasn't necessarily the easiest conversation to have. Um, but I think I'm in a reasonably good place with most of those now. That's great. That's great. Because as you know, we talk a lot about it. as you change, the people around you either are going to grow with you and change with you and be really supportive of that, or they're going to, you know, kind of go kicking and screaming a little bit. So um, it's always a, an interesting evolution as you grow and set boundaries and go after what you want and all of that so yeah it's interesting actually um, one of my closest friends I didn't tell her a lot of what I was doing for a while just because I was kind of caught up in it and you know but then we had that conversation and she's actually ended up starting her own business since then um, because she was so inspired by everything I was doing which is really awesome so we have sit down meetings every couple of weeks now where we go over our business goals for the next couple of weeks fantastic right isn't that how you want it to be and now you were you not sharing it with her initially because uh you didn't want the judgment or the the um like any anything to get into your psyche that might throw you off your game yeah yeah and I think being a like the books I write are romance books and I think that's a big part of it as well so you know, the first 18 months I was publishing, I was kind of keeping quite quiet about it in general, just because you worry about the judgment you might get from people for that. But that's something I've been making an effort to change this year. And I put that out there reasonably soon after meeting someone that I know I'm going to see around quite a lot. Because you write some steamy <laughs> romances, right? Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So let's go back to the journey of, okay you are making about a thousand dollars a month and you have a big goal of leaving your day job, which you know requires a certain amount of money in the bank so that you feel secure to leave that and um, some, some continuity with the, the income coming in. So it's not like a fluke. So you have the big desire there, correct? Like that's a really, yeah. that's a really clear desire. Yes how did you go about making such a quantum leap? What would you, in your own assessment, I have my own assessment, but in your own assessment, what do you think you did that really was, you know, the big causes to have this effect? I, this is something I've thought about a lot and I kind of have a few ideas, but I'm still not quite 100% sure how it actually happens. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Um, but I think part of it was potentially my kind of, I think I had a bit of a fear of being seen. Um, and I think that's something I've worked on quite a lot. And also the kind of nerves around uh, investing in the business and myself um, and and taking risks, I think, is something I've, I've been doing a bit more of this year. And also trying to step back and take things a bit less personally. I think that's something that's quite um, challenging in the kind of space I work in, because you're working on something 
you know, so long and for so in, in depth and right into it. And then it, you've got to take a step back and treat it as like a product that you're marketing and not get offended if someone doesn't like it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think all of those are really super critical to making a breakthrough. So visibility is such a huge thing because in order to market yourself and put yourself out there, you have to be visible and you have to, to be visible at a much higher level. You do, you did have to take a lot of investment risks, right? Like we talked about running ads and, um, putting, you know, doing different kinds of promotions and things like that. How difficult was that for you to wrap your, your head around the math on that and the, the risk involved in, in doing that? Um, yeah, that was quite challenging. I've have a real hang up with numbers, which I'm, I'm working on, but at the start of the year, I think at the very first retreat we had, I had to sit there, I was sitting there doing numbers during a bunch of the talks and I'm getting myself so wound up about it. Um, and it, yeah, and I think being honest and open about those is really helping both in like with myself and also with others, um, you know, because like my husband last year, I don't think we really talked about that sort of thing much at all because I just didn't want to admit where things were at. And, um, but, you know, this month, this year, I tell them my goal every month and where we're at. And, you know, he's helped me with a bunch of spreadsheets and I'm, yeah, I think being open with him has helped me be more honest with myself as well. So as you know, but maybe the listeners don't know, I often talk about making love to the numbers, right? Like if you don't know what's happening financially, if you haven't done the math, right? Like that first conversation was like, what's your goal? What do you need to do to get there? And how do we work that out? And what does that look like? And what would you need to do to scale? And like, like you actually have to, the numbers help you figure out what the strategy is. And if you don't, if you you don't have your eye on the ball, you you can't figure out what needs to be done. You go spinning in a lot of different directions. So that was a really big thing. And and you took that on, um, I guess, hook, line and sinker. Like you, you really um, connected with it. And um, was that challenging to then do the the investment piece in terms of the advertising? Not at first. I think the challenging part was when it didn't necessarily play out exactly like I hoped it would at first. So there was a lot of momentum building. The first, um, I think May was when it really started to pick up for me this year. So kind of from February through to May, I was trying to like, um, you know, it wasn't quite playing out like I'd forecasted with all the numbers and I was just kind of holding on and hoping it would come around. Yeah, um, so I, I mean, so that's, did. that's awesome. So that was four months. I just counted February, March, April, May, right? That you yeah. you had to keep investing and keep testing and tweaking. So this is a this to me is a testament to the concept of perseverance, right? And not giving up on on the first challenge. And so, how did you know that that to to stay persistent with that instead of being like, ah, oh, well, advertising doesn't work or or promotions on Amazon don't work. Like, how did you figure out that this was worthy of pursuing? I think for me, it comes back to that question, you know, what would you do to get what you really want to be? And for me, that's worth, like I said before, it's worth a lot. So it was just, it, like it was, it was a bit nerve wracking, but I wasn't going to stop because I wasn't going to give up. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So what she's talking about is I often say, like, how badly do you want it? Like, do you, like, what do you really want? And are you in, and once you fall in love and it has to be a a, a strong hook, once you fall in love with what you really want, then the ways and the means come in when the desires felt the supply is ready to appear, but you have to really want it. So this is an example of that very thing. She really wanted it. She, we talked about how you have to invest in the advertising to get your, your, your name out there and to, to start the momentum, you have to figure out the numbers on that and how to scale that. And there's a way to do that. Go do it. Right. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and then you had to stay persistent and not get just dis- discouraged when it wasn't initially playing out, but you, you must've had some success, right? It wasn't, we didn't go from a thousand to 9,000 a month 
overnight. So what was the trajectory on the financials? So it kind of picked up, I think February, March, April, I was kind of like around 1500 through to maybe just under 2000. And then March, sorry, May, I think I jumped up to 5000. So that was kind of like the first big jump. And then it stayed around there through for another couple of months. And then I had another jump. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of been a slow build with a couple of little jumps in there. That's great. I love it. What What's most surprising to you about that journey? Like now looking back, you're like, okay, that's the journey. That's just how it was. But when you were looking at it from a year ago, looking forward compared to how it actually happened, is there anything surprising to you about that? I think potentially part of what surprises me is how I'm not actually working harder now than I was then. Like I'm still, I I was working hard then and I'm working hard now, but I'm doing different things and it's the different things that I'm doing, you know, rather than trying to do all the things that don't necessarily work, it's narrowing down on those things that do work. Um, So yeah, I think the surprising thing is that I feel like I'm doing the same amount of work and yet getting so much more from it. I love that, right? One of the things that my mentor told me, but did not explain was it's easier to make a lot of money than a little money. And I was like, what is, how is that possible? Right? Because I was still in the, the framework that money came through hard work alone, right? You, like you said, you're still putting the effort in. I still put the effort in, right? I'm still doing my work in this world, right? But it's not that alone. And, and in, some ways that the adage work smarter, not harder is a little bit to flip because it sounds like there's a one size fits all smarter way, but really it's, it's figuring out what the things are that's, that are going to move the needle in your industry. And, and, uh, you've dialed that in and we can, we continue to dial that in. So I love that. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now you talked about you've grown around visibility, you've grown around taking risks. What's an example of one of the risks that you took that you wouldn't have taken in the past? Um, I've actually changed a lot of my book covers this year. Um, I kind of, I think I was quite attached to them all, but they weren't necessarily the most on point for what I was, what my books are. Um, so yeah, I paid earlier in the year to have a series of them completely redone and I've just had another series redone um, this month and I've also set a couple of my books free permanently so that kind of funnels people in Um, and actually probably the biggest change for me this year is taking my books out of Amazon exclusivity um, and putting them up on all retailers because uh, yeah up until I think it was February I had all those books only on Amazon with the paperbacks available elsewhere, but the eBooks only there. Um, just because I was afraid if I put them up on other places, you know, that they wouldn't sell. Um, because you hear about what a slow build that kind of thing is and how people have, you know, you hear the horror stories. <laughs> but okay. for me, it's worked really well. That's fantastic. So, so you took some um, risks in terms of like going against the the advice that was necessarily out there or the maybe not the advice but the stories that were out there and yeah. and also your your covers would you say that you took some risk around that not just in terms of uh investing in it but like they were they're a little racier yeah in some cases yeah um and yeah, I think you also run the risk with those covers and, you know, upsetting your current readers. But the thing that I heard that made me, you know, decide to go for it is that you've got your current readers. They might not necessarily like your new covers, but your new covers are to bring in new readers. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. And then what are you, what are you most proud of this, this year, if you will? Um, I think there are probably two things for me. One is that $9,000 month, which was pretty awesome. Um, And the other is that one of my books back in, I think it was August, hit number um, 19 in the Amazon US Kindle store. So I was pretty pleased with that because I hadn't had anything in the top 100 before when it made it into the top 20. Yeah, I, I really, I love that. I love that. So 
any perspective that you want to share with people specifically who are in the self-publishing world because um, other authors might uh, be very interested in your perspective given how rapidly you've risen and been able to make a successful career out of your book publishing is there anything specific that you'd like to share about self-publishing um I think one of the things I touched on before and that's not trying to do all the things working out the things that work best you know rather than spreading yourself really thin because I think there's a bit of a feeling in the industry that you have to be absolutely everywhere doing everything and it's just not really very sustainable and I don't think it probably works that well either um and the other thing is probably you know I think people overlook the importance of mindset um you know and get caught up in all those minutiae and then miss the you know how if you change your mindset how it infiltrates everything um and it you know it's a massive piece to look overlook yeah I love that well let's talk mindset what has been the biggest shift that you've taken from either the work that we've done or how you've implemented it in your your business oh I'm not sure that I don't feel like there's been one big change it's been lots of little changes that have all kind of um added up to you know a big big turnaround um how would you describe your mindset before like a year ago and how would you describe your mindset now maybe that's a better question to ask yeah um, I think I was quite, I was definitely in the scarcity mindset a year ago, and I think I was quite fear driven, which most people probably are to a certain extent. Um, and also, you know, you, like getting caught up in all the little dramas that come up. Um, whereas now I think I'm aiming more for what I want and trying to move out of that scarcity mindset. And also, you know, kind of letting some of that drama wash past and realizing that I don't need to get caught up in it is that drama with other people or is that drama yeah 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 okay good so it's 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 allowed you to be more I would call that more resilient and more self-directed yeah and happier because you're not getting you know pulled into all those things that's great I, I love that I love that any perspective that you would like to share about the upcoming summit that we have how that's you know we t we started this conversation about like how you get up at three in the morning to come to these events like what's made that worth coming getting up at three in the morning for how about that as a question um i think they're a really good touch point for me to kind of check back in with everything i've been doing and all my goals and remember all of the, the things that you've kind of been working on but they might have you know slipped off the radar and for me, that first summit, there was just a lot of information to process. And I think each time you come along, you pick up a little bit more and you, and revisit goals and um, mindset issues that might have slipped by and work on the new ones. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love that you come to them, even though you know the foundational material already, that you're looking to, to, to hear it again in a new way. Um, any advice for women in general, not just self-published authors on the entrepreneurial journey that you've been on? I think one of the big things for me has been not um, the guilt over, you know, all the things that you feel like you should be giving your time to and feeling like you're being selfish for doing something that's for you um, and trying to let that go and turn it around and see how you following your dreams and doing that can actually help the other people around you. Uh, I think that's something a lot of women have a hard time with that kind of guilt that you're doing something wrong by doing something for you. Yeah. And how has what you've been doing for you helped those around you? I mentioned my friend earlier who started her business and I just feel like there's kind of been a general kind of lift um, in the people around me and the mood and, and positivity and optimism for the future. Yeah. Rising tide lifts all boats, right? You know, when you go up, it can really help those around you. Okay, before I ask my last question, I would love for you to share the best places for people to find the Alexa Rivers 
um, compendium of books and what titles they might look for or how they might find you online. Cool. Um, the best place to find me is my website, which is alexarivers.com. Um, and I've got three main series out at the moment, the Little Sky Romance series, which is completely finished, the Haven Bay series, which is in progress, and the um, Crown MMA Romance series, which has got the last book coming in January, and that'll also be coming out in audio soon. Fantastic. You're doing audios. I love it. I love it. Okay. So my last question for you is what makes you an unstoppable woman? I think for me, that's just persistence and drive and, you know, waking up every day and doing the things you need to do and keeping at it, even when it doesn't look like it's necessarily working out. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I think you do that really well. You've been super accountable. You stay, you're like on all the calls. You're, you're super persistent. You're going for more and, and you're really showing up. So I'm super proud of you, obviously. And I cannot wait for you to break through to the next level. You only have a few more months from what I can gather, um, before you reach the goal that you have for leaving your day job. Is that correct? Do I have that right? Yes, that's the plan. Woo-hoo. Are you excited? I am. It's, yeah, it's really exciting. It's a little bit scary too, thinking about all the changes, but um, yes, very exciting. Do you have a game plan for when you leave? Because right now you have a really structured, you know, like I have to get this done in the morning, I have to get this done in the evening, right? Yeah, I've started putting together a plan and I've actually got it on my to-do list for next month to really um, build that out. Great. Is that in your creation playbook? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We, we do this thing called a creation playbook, but where you put your, your specific goals in a, in a framework and you start seeing that as you go through the, through time and looking at it every day. And it really helps you stay focused on what you, you want to be accomplishing. So I'm happy to hear that it's there and okay. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Alexa. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being so generous with your time. And I hope all our listeners really take away some, some profound nuggets from Alexa's story that it's very possible. She nine times, like, like she nine times her, not her total re- income because she, she's not even counting her day job money in this. She nine times her self-publishing author income. So if you've ever wanted to be an author, ever wanted to go out on your own, please take away some of these key frames that she's shared with us in terms of how she's made it happen, which includes a very structured, organized day. (laughs) Okay. That's I'm impressed by how you do that. Okay, everyone. Thanks for listening. Please uh, share this with your friends and we'll catch you in the next episode. Be unstoppable. Take care. Bye. Hey there, Unstoppable Woman. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that episode. I often hear, how do you make a quantum leap? How do I get out of my own way and execute at the highest level? As a high achiever, you know that hard work is part of the picture, but there's something more. And that's what I want to teach you at the Unstoppable Woman Income Breakthrough Summit. This is three days immersive with me. I'm going to be teaching you what it took for me to go from 138K a year to 700K in one year as a solo entrepreneur. That's a five times quantum leap in income. And I've helped so many clients do similar things and I would love to help you do that as well. We are going to be working on your marketing. We're gonna be working on your mindset so it's a bulletproof mindset so that you can do what you want to do in this world. And we're gonna teach you how to grow and scale your business faster than you ever thought possible. So please, if this is what you want, do not miss this. Join us November 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Unstoppable Woman Income Breakthrough Summit. You can find out more at joinamiralive.com. That's joinamiralive.com. Go buy your ticket now, and I can't wait to see you there.